Each year, DEC biologists, technicians, and partners from around the state banned over 3,500 Canada geese and nearly 8,000 migratory game birds. Or six. Banning programs are vital to how we properly manage these populations and ensure that they are abundant for future generations to enjoy. What was the sex? Female got it. When hunters or the general public encounter these bands, their reports provide biologists with information on annual survival, harvest rates, migration patterns, and breeding productivity. All of this work is funded by license sales and federal grants from an excise tax on hunting arms and ammunition called the Pittman-Robertson Act. Each year in late June and early July, Canada geese actually molt their flight feathers and are unable to fly for a period of two to three weeks. So During this time, DEC staff finds the flightless flocks and seeks permission from property owners to ban the geese on their property. The banding operation is similar to a farmer herding sheep. Staff position themselves around the flock to keep them in one spot while others set up a portable catch pen. Once the pen is set up, staff surround the birds and push them towards the open catch pen. Often, we are banding geese in pretty warm conditions, so staff will quickly set up a canopy to prevent the birds from overheating. Once the geese are in the catch pen, staff go into the pen and remove goslings as quickly as possible to ensure they are not trampled by the larger adults. Our primary concern whenever we're out banding geese or other birds is to ensure the birds are safely handled and released without any harm to them. The overall size is small. Next, the birds are aged by trained staff. Typically look at the tail feathers, and if they're notched like this, see this one right here, it's got, like it's missing the top of the feather, it's broken off. So that was the, the little downy feathers that it's born with have already broken off, and these adult feathers are growing in behind. So those characteristics combined tell you that this is a juvenile or a hatchier bird. After determining the age, biologists have to determine if it's a male or female. This is the least glamorous part of the job. Unlike many duck species, in Canada geese, it isn't readily apparent from their outside appearance whether or not it's a male or female. To determine the sex, biologists have to open the cloaca or vent, which contains the sex organs. After the goose is aged and sex, the bird is ready to be banded. Biologists attach an aluminum butt-end band to one of the bird's legs. Each of these bands has a unique serial number that identifies the bird. These numbers are never reused. Biologists throughout the country heavily rely on hunters and the general public reporting bands that they encounter. Without the efforts of the public reporting bands they encounter, our ability to manage these migratory species would be greatly compromised. Impressively, reporting rates, as in the number of bands that are encountered and are actually reported to the bird banding lab, have significantly increased over time from less than 50% to greater than 90% reporting rates today.